<laughs> we got it. She is in, y'all. I would like to thank y'all. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you guys for tuning in to Ad Bar Max Slash Radio, where we advertise all gifts and talents. And today we have Miss Christine McDonald, a big ministry leader. For, and I'll just explain it to them how it is important as we all stick together. And then I haven't interviewed a woman that is a good representation of the Holy Spirit and the things that you're doing. And it's, it's just amazing to me. But I'm going to let you introduce yourself a little bit. Then we're going to go ahead into the interview. Thank you so much, too. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Jesse. I'm excited to be here. Can you hear me okay? Yes, ma'am. I can hear you perfect. Awesome. Okay, so um, I'm Christine McDonald. I'm um, a formerly incarcerated person. I was homeless for 21 years, and 17 of those years were in Kansas City, Missouri. <laughs> Um, I was um, a prostitute on Eastman's Avenue in the Northeast Corridor for any of you Kansas Cityans that are familiar with the neighborhood. Um, mm. I've been involved in gangs. I've been arrested 103 times. Wow. That's nuts, right? <laughs> um, and I've been to prison seven. Um, some of us are slower learners than others. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and then, to, you know, through that, um, you know, I, I grew up with some, some challenges in my childhood, and, you know, um, just some, some different things in and out of the juvenile justice system, et cetera, et cetera, chronic runaway, all these different things. Um, and, and through all of these years of addiction and prostitution and politics <laughs> and prison and, and all these different things and, um, and games, um, you know, um, I, was, I was blessed. Um, man didn't save me, but God redeemed me. <laughs> amen, amen. Amen. Okay, we're going to go ahead and get into the interview. I want to start off with ex talking about a, a little bit where you're from. Uh, wh where are you from? And, and explain how it was where you're from. Oh, so you don't think I'm from Kansas City originally? <laughs> <laughs> are you saying I have an accent? <laughs> yes, you do. <laughs> <laughs> Um, originally, I was born in Oklahoma. Wow. Um, and so I grew up in Oklahoma. I did not know my father, so father was home kind of thing. Um, moved around a lot. Mm. Um, ended up running away a lot. There was just a lot of um, dysfunction. Um, don't really want to go into a lot of detail there because I don't want to tell other people's story. Um, and then um, I ran away multiple times. And um, was deemed, you know, incorrigible. <laughs> um, but I was really actually running from things that that, mm. that were very unpleasant in my home. And nobody ever asked me, you know, what's going on, you know, why or anything. It was like, you need to quit when you're locked away, young lady. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so what? And it was never relational, if you will. Right. Um, there was no um, no God in my you know, no church, no upbringing there. So, mm. so no faith um, in juvenile justice system, in family courts, in group homes, all of the craziness. I mean, I went to a group home one time and I climbed down the third floor fire escape just like <laughs> a story just because I'm ah, not wow. there. <laughs> wow. Um, and so through that, I ended up, when I ran away the last time, I ended up kind of on my own. Because mm -hmm. I knew if I got caught, and I would just go back through the same cycle that never changed. Right. And so I, I, I guess I, I thought in my own 15-year-old mind that my individual survival skills were were better than any other options that I had. Right. Which ended me up in Oklahoma City, a big city, you know, for this small town girl. And <laughs> um, <laughs> I am... Um, I stayed in the abandoned house for like five days, um, and, and I had been involved in like some drugs. I used to take, um, I'd get home from school and I'd take pills to make me sleep, so I didn't wow. deal with some of the dysfunction going on around me. Right. Um, so so I, I dealt with some, some stuff there, um, and but now I'm a runaway and I just don't want anybody to know who I am, so I'm, I'm in this abandoned house because I'm scouting out the neighborhood because I right. got off a great <laughs> peeping out the place and I see this boarded up house I'm like I can at least sleep there 
And I get in there and I go to sleep and I'm like, well, I'm gonna have to eat. <laughs> <laughs> so I um, kind of like caught myself, you know, scouting out the neighborhood. Five days into the middle of the winter, I ended up, um, guy offered me a ride. And um, he said, you know, what's your name? And I made up a name. I was Stacy Carr. <laughs> Stacy, because everywhere I went, in every facility, every school, Stacy was always like pretty and popular and and smart and everything that I wasn't. Um, I had been told, you know, that I was retarded and, and stupid and just all these different things. And, and I really believed the labels, you know, we internalized the things that those are all things that God he, we are fiercely and wonderfully made by our creator with a design for our lives. And, right. and none of those negative things are part of that. Right. So I, I, and, I heard, but, no. not to, go, ahead. go ahead. I was about to say, I heard you say that there was no dad in the home. So could that yeah. be the reason that, that that's how that, you... Go I ahead. think that had a lot to do with... Oh, I didn't know my father. Um, eventually there was a stepfather in the home, but that was dysfunctional too. Um, there was alcoholism and, and just a lot of stuff. And um, so there was not that that father bond. And God created the family unit to have a male and, and a mom and a dad. You know, it's all supposed to be. I mean, our God is our father. I mean, he's our Abba. Um, right. and, and he loves us. But I, I never had that. Um, and, and so, um, yeah, I do think that um, part of my longing for... Um, feeling loved was not having that but I don't know that I felt that love either from my mom because I don't know that she had the capacity to love me um and, and so um I don't know that I was originally searching for something I just was running from a lot of things <laughs> <laughs> and, wow I mean that, but that's the truth I, because I, I it was just so much brokenness right. I had been a cutter um, I self-harm, I started self-harming when I was about eight or nine, and self-harming, you know, I would cut, cut, and cut, and it was like the secret, it was this deep, dark secret, and as much of a secret as it was for me to cut, all I did was want somebody to notice that I was hurting. Wow. So you do know? you think it's important for, for a child, period, or just a, a woman? A young, young girl to have a father and mother there, or just a father? Oh my there. God! Yes. So, uh, and today, especially in our culture, in this microwave culture world, <laughs> um, God designed that unit. I mean, the husband and wife are supposed to become one with God, so the three become one in unity, right. and through that love, abundant, because we love our husband a hundred percent. Our wife loves us with a godly love, 100%. So we're giving 100% of our sacrifice to the one that we love. And we're both giving all of that to God so he can fill us up so that we have the capacity for that. Yes, ma'am. And when we don't have that, how can that overflow to our children? Mm. So what, 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 how does it, what is that feeling? Do you know how to explain that feeling to what to... You know, you can explain to a person that's going through that that situation now to explain that feeling, so they know that somebody has been there before and somebody do care. Yeah. Um. I'll be honest. As a kid, as a youth, I don't know that I knew that I was missing love. Mm. Um. You know, especially when you like get into adolescence and puberty and all of those things, everything is just mush. Everything is just total chaos and mush, but this is the deal. I think if we know from the beginning, and I think in a really good style of Christian foundational home, children know this, that you're loved and your love isn't, isn't, is, is, is not just a, a motherly love and a fatherly love, it's a godly love. And, and that the, our creator has created you and, and, and wonderfully designed you to be just as he wanted you to be. And, 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 and as you walk through that, and that's reinforced all the time and continually, right? right. I think that 
fills our heart as children as we're growing, right? So that we always have that to fall back on, right. even when we're struggling with our parents in that carnal relationship with, with our human relationships. Mm. Um, because it becomes instilled in our spirit and in our heart. Right. Mm. So, so with coming up, uh, I, you know, mm -hmm. People may, some of the viewers may not know that you're uh, fully blind, you know, with the situations Ooh. that you, you are going through. They, uh -huh. They're looking at you. You can't tell because I'm looking at you. You can't tell. But you can oh, tell. I'm, you. I'm, you know, and I, I want you to explain how, how, how that process went through. And then I'm going to ask this other question that this guy is asking on here. Okay. Um, so, so my blindness happened. So when I exited, when I got off the streets, I had gone to service providers, and I said, I just want help, I got felony convictions, I've never had a job, I've been living in a park on Independence Avenue for X amount of years, you know, I, I don't have a high school diploma, I, I don't, I, I can barely read or write, I don't know what to do, and I applied for service, and they said, well, we're sorry, you don't have enough support systems in the community for us to help you, and I said, well, if I had enough support in the community to help me, I surely wouldn't need to come here and wait two weeks to tell me you need to help. <laughs> <laughs> that just doesn't make sense. The people that need, that have the most barriers, that need the most guidance, are usually the ones that organizations turn away because the likelihood of success. Right is low and they need mm -hmm. that success for their grant funders for their public use go versus thinking the people that are going to be the biggest challenge and the most work are the ones that need your guidance but that's too messy that's too much work and so when i exited i my 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 situation there was i almost took a life mm -hmm. and, and so i was still sighted right um um i, um, I, I sat out the church and i and I prayed, 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 and I prayed some more. If there is a God, because this is what I knew. I had gone to the food pantry a few times. I'd gone down to the soup kitchen, and I'd get there, and they would, we'd have to go to a church service before they'd feed us. So I, I'm going to walk down here to eat, but if I'm <laughs> preaching, I'm not going to get the meal. But if I make it to the meal, I'm going to get turned. I'm going to burn in hell for all my evil, wicked ways. Right. Nobody guided me, but they wanted me to, uh, you know, confess your sins and give your life to Christ so you don't burn me in hell and turn for your evil ways so you can get a sandwich. <laughs> and, right. he's, and, and the God that I've come to know isn't like that. He, it's, he's an inviting relational God. And, and so I'm going to come hear you preach, not because I want to hear about I'm going to burn in hell. I know my life is a mess. I, come on, I'm homeless. I walk here barefoot and I'm living in a bar. I don't need you to right. reaffirm that for you. I need you to help me find my way out. Nobody told me about God and Jesus who, who came here in the flesh and walked the earth as a homeless being specifically. So he could die for all the mess that all of us would be. Nobody told me that amazing, beautiful story that someone loved me so much to die for me. Mm. You know? Right. How different would our response be from the Christian community to those very people in need if we started there? Mm. So, um... I've prayed and prayed. If there's this God that I've heard about, and um, let death find me, because I thought that was my only way out. I believe that was the only way out for me. And um, I finally resigned to the that I must be so awful I wasn't worthy of death. And that's a pretty dark place to be. Right. And um, a guy pulled up in broad daylight, little red truck. I heard the engine run. Turned the corner, flashed the brake lights, I jumped in, we went down and parked, he gave me some money, he come around the side of the truck, and he beat me, and he raped me, and he beat me again, like I had never been beaten. And I had been through some things, I had been stabbed, I had been hogtied, I had been branded with a cattle iron. I had never had anything happen and beaten like this man had beaten me. And I, as, as hours had passed, he pulled out a gun, grabbed me by my hair and he pulled me up to my knees and he told me to beg for my life and I didn't do it I didn't 
because I close my eyes and I'm like, it's finally over. There's a God. My mercy has been granted. Mm. And in and, and all my brokenness, this was the best I could think in my right thinking, right? And, and, and so what I didn't know was a, a guy like him, they thrive on the fear and I didn't have any fear. And, and so um, he decided to assault me again and I had a chance to get the gun. And when I caught the gun, this rage and anger for all these years of, of pain and hurt and my friends that had been murdered and all the things I'd experienced and all the things that people had experienced, just, I'd never fought him back. And I just had all this in me and I held the gun to his head and I told him to get on his knees and I told him to give me a reason to let you live. And I realized in that moment that I had the capacity to take a life mm. and that made me no different than everybody else. And I didn't want that to happen. And I believe that God, because I had so much rage, I had so much anger, I had so much hate. I believe God gave me the strength to not pull the trigger because I had every intent of killing that man that day. Mm. And I emptied the gun in the ground. I threw it. I grabbed it with my clothes and I got arrested. I got arrested a, a couple of days later and I went to jail and I prison. I went back to prison on parole violation. And I knew if I didn't find my way out, if I went back, if something didn't give, I was going to be the same monster I had endured for all those years. And um, I knew I had the capacity to kill. And I knew once it happened, there was no going back. Right. And I didn't want to be that person. And so um, I, I I, did. I started, you know, fighting to find my way, et cetera, et cetera, turn away from organizations, trying to get help. You're too far gone. Just all these different things. And then I lost my sight. I um I met a guy, I fell in love, because you know in, in DOC halfway half is for any of you guys that's been in prison, you know what I'm talking about. You get into a DOC halfway house, you get cleaned up and you think you look good, you get a job, and uh, he got a job, and he's cleaned up. Hey, at least we had in prison. <laughs> and you hook up. We in love now. <laughs> and that's what I did. I hooked up, um, in a halfway house like any good uh 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 DOC releasey would do, <laughs> and um, got in a relationship, not knowing anything about love, um, just knew that he had a job, and that was more than me, <laughs> and, um, you know, we continued to see each other, call ourselves fall in love, eventually, I ended up pregnant, and, and early on in the pregnancy, there were some complications, you know, now I'm, 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 I'm a couple years in my clean time, um, there's complications in the pregnancy, I went to the doctor, they told me, um, they recommended a, at that time, um, it, it had, didn't have anything to do with my eyes yet, at that time, they was early in the pregnancy, and they recommended a, a, a medical termination of pregnancy due to some tumors and stuff that I had, and I said, I can't make that choice, and then, um, a few months later, and I got these really bad headaches, I actually, um, actually went back to prison on a non- um, criminal revocation. I failed to report, and I got and 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 I they sent me back to prison on a non-criminal revocation. I had no new charges, nothing. I just failed to report and just sent me back to prison. And so I get into prison, um, and I get this really bad headache, and, I, and I'm pregnant, you know, and I've been working, I'm doing good, and um, I get into I have these headaches. They take me to the infirmary, um. And they keep me in the front room because of these headaches. And then I, I started bleeding. And the next day, here I am blind. I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm blind in one eye. Three days later, I'm blind in the other. I, they took me to the hospital. So I, the last thing I saw was an isolation prison infirmary cell. Wow. And um, I, uh, I went to the hospital and they told me, you know, we don't know what's causing it, but you have this raging inflammation in your brain, um, in your eyes, and, and we have this medication. We can IV this medication into you. It's going to bring down the inflammation. The pain's going to go away. Um, the inflammation in the eyes are going to go away, um, and we're going to be able to save your vision. Um, however, this medication is going to kill your unborn child. And I still didn't really have a, a thing with God yet, and, and but but I knew innately in my soul I couldn't make a choice. Right. Like, and so I said, well, we'll just wait till the baby comes. And so um, the baby came, and it was too late. My eyes were pulled with blood. 
administered the medication and it stopped the inflammation in the rest of my body, but both my eyes had to be medically removed. So I actually chose the life of my unborn child um, um, over saving my eyesight. Wow. So through all the things that you've been through, how, once, well, let's see this. When did you really accept Christ and begin your faith? When did you do that? Um, 2005. Hmm. Um, I started my journey with God, and he started stalking me. He's a stalker. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't care what nobody says. Maybe it's a crossover between, like, you know, my vision, my personal, you know, we got to kind of make jokes you know maybe it's a crossover between like maybe morgan freeman and george burns he's hanging out in heaven and he's like i don't know it's just like we're up there you know what i'm saying they're gonna be like going through all this mess took you long enough right just a few weeks old my my kid's dad was like you know this is a lot I, this is a lot I mean you're I, you know you're, you're blind you're never gonna see again these are prosthetics they're plastic shells with pretty blue paint on them <laughs> um and so um it was a lot it was a lot that's that's a lot and um i had he, he was at work and i was alone and and God just really spoke to me, like literally and figuratively. Um, I we just moved in this neighborhood, and, and 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 I think all these pieces are so important to understand how amazing God orchestrates all these moving parts from from the heavens, and in order to to, to meet us where we're at. Right. Um. And and, and in that moment, you know, um, I uh, I was going across the room and I started seeing these like visions it was really crazy because I couldn't see I didn't have eyes and I'm seeing visions so this is not okay <laughs> <laughs> but I'm seeing all these experiences that I had survived like I'm watching them happen to me as a spectator mm. and in every single one of those visions is are going by like this and like this and like this I see this bright unidentifiable image right mm -hmm. every single one it's like oh my gosh oh my gosh what is happening and so now my heart's pounding <laughs> <laughs> and i'm like shaking i'm like what's going on i'm losing my mind and um then i um there was another vision and this other vision that came in just as quick and 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 i saw me smiling and laughing because look let me just tell you smiling and laughing wasn't my thing um i had a tooth you can imagine i was the drama queen i had a tooth i did not smile i remember when i got clean i was running to small people in the streets like girl you can smile <laughs> And with that heart transformation, I got joy, mm. and I got grace, and I got mercy that I didn't deserve, and because that I can smile today, and, and I can say I'm full of joy. And so when um, I saw me smiling with all these people, and I didn't know any of them, I'm like, ooh, that's weird, because I am not a laughy, smiling person. I am today. I wasn't then. And um, the next scene was, uh, 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 um, she was my nemesis. Um, she's dead now. She died. Um, but her name was Linda Skinner, and she was kind of my nemesis in the hood. Everybody knew in the we hood. Did not and each other. <laughs> oh my gosh! It was always some kind of drama between us. <laughs> <laughs> and um, she was kissing me on the cheek, saying, "I'm so glad to see you. I've been waiting for you." I'm like, "Huh? What? That's too weird." Um, and um, then I saw a, a glowing light. And, and as the light came in, I saw a, a blackness on it. And, 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 and as it got closer and closer, it was me. Mm. And it was me. And I saw it was like this big hand glowing. And I seen it like cupping up. And I'm standing right in the middle. And it's just glowing. And it's so beautiful and peaceful. And then all of a sudden, I hear somebody knock on my door. <laughs> and I'm like, oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm like, I'm not going to answer that. I'm having a moment. Because right now, I think I'm crazy. And I need to call the psych ward. <laughs> <laughs> And I hear a voice say, hello, 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 my name is Chris. We're from the church down the street. 
We wanted to meet our new neighbors and invite you to church. Mm. So I still ignored it. Yes. I'm trying to gain my composure. But we had just moved into this house and we didn't have curtains up everywhere yet. And she's like, no, 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 you're not. Hey, I see you in there. Hi. Hey, Chris, we're from the church down the street. <laughs> to go to church I eventually gave my life to Christ and then I got baptized um, and when I came out of the baptismal water I said hey now that I've been baptized can I join your street outreach and can I be a part of the ministry here and she's like well you didn't have to be baptized to do that but sure <laughs> um, and that just kind of started my journey I started a street outreach and taking out sandwiches and burgers to and hijinks to people um, along Independence Avenue I started going to the jails um, you know, from there, I, I, I got into get my GED, I learned how to be blind, I went to college, got a degree, went to work, and wrote a couple books. <laughs> um, you, hey, your, your testimony is powerful. It is powerful. <laughs> I got a big question for you, though, because like I uh -oh. said, I'm partially, I'm partially blind, too, also. And I'm, okay. and I'm, and I'm, and I am a follower of Christ, I'm a minister. So, uh, with, uh, with you being a follower of Christ and all these things happening to you, do you ever get down on yourself? Do sometimes, you know, do it ever come to you to where to you're feeling like, man, I'm still in this position, you know, and the Bible say he made the blind see the dumb talk and like you know, do you do you ever get down to it, ever feel like when is it when am I gonna see what I wanna see? Cause when I when this happened to me, I was partially blind for a week. And I know it, it was it it was it wasn't a good sight, you know. I was down, and then after that, my sight came back. I, I was, uh, you know, it, it was still hard for me, you know, because it, you know it's 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 different. It's different when it's in your face. When it's in your face, it's different, you know. So how do do you ever get down on yourself? <laughs> I have no eyes, like I shared, but my eyes were medically removed. So I'm in pitch black darkness 24-7. And um, that sucks. I, I would lie to you right now. And I'm not going to do that. I'm, and I'm just not going to do that. I'm not going to lie to you and deceive you and tell you, oh, yeah, it's a piece of cake because it is a pain to be lying. <laughs> yes, it's a nuisance. It it's inconvenient. But this is a deal. I was a jerk mm. back in the day. Mm -hmm. When I gave my life to Christ, I was a jerk. Mm. When I lost my sight, I had to learn to become interdependent of people around me. Mm. Because I didn't had to, to rely on random strangers just to give me the bad So I believe my blindness became my blessing because it catapulted me to understand about being interdependent because we, as the body of Christ, all have to be interdependent of the whole. That is our job. My mm. carnal mind, does it suck? Absolutely. Is it easy? No. I'm always struggling trying to get people to not see me as a helpless, defenseless person or to see me as an equal intelligent person. Um, there are all these different things that I deal with um, that, that I really struggle to move beyond. But this is the deal. I know that I know that I know that I know. <laughs> yes, ma'am. <laughs> that God don't make mistakes. Amen. Screw me and made me closer to him. And we're supposed to walk by faith and, and not by sight. But that's... that's... I'm not cluttered Ooh. with the world around me. I can't judge people by how I perceive them visually um i literally can feel them versus see them and so i don't have any jumble of perceptions or preconceived notions or delusions or agendas or things fall into my mind oh look at that she thought that works what was she thinking when she left the house that oh she must have had a rough day <laughs> the them kids must have been hard on her <laughs> you know i i don't none of that crash. um but does it is it hard Every single day and every single day sometimes I have to struggle with what humans expect me to be versus and what they want me to be 
versus what God's designed me to be. And what I know is if I do what God designed me to do, and if I'm faithful to who he's called me to be in all situations, not just the comfortable ones, right? Right. He gives me strength to endure. Mm. You strong though. You strong. <laughs> you are. But you, you, you broke it down. You broke it down to where everybody can understand, not by sight, but by faith. You said it, and that that's what he was trying to, I think that, like you said, that was your blessing. That's what he was trying to show you. I can show you yes. bigger things if you walk by the faith than the visualized yes. thing. I can show you bigger things. Like you said, you started seeing visuals when you was blind, and you was like, how am I seeing this? I can't even see, but I'm seeing this picture. Right? It's vivid, clear, because God can yes. talk to you and show you things that people can't at all times. You know, and, and, and it is amazing that I, I'm really amazed that we had you on the uh, on the, as a guest. Your testimony is so powerful. And I just seen in the comments that you have a movie coming out about your life. I did. <laughs> it's, um, it's crazy. My first book, Crop Purple, is actually being made into a full-length feature film. We'll be filming it down in the Northeast Corridor in some of the very areas where things happen. Um, and, and, and the whole purpose behind that is, is to really humanize um, the, the homeless, the addicted, and the prostituted. I, I think that we tend to identify them, those people, versus we people. We separate that social economic status, the race, the color, the choices, the behaviors, and the labels, which impedes us from connecting to the humanity and the likeness that God created us all. You are powerful. You, you are <laughs> powerful. You are. But, well, um, so what's the name of the movie and, and when can we expect it? I see it says sometime next year in the theaters. Yeah, sometimes next year. We're excited. We hope, God willing, and we will be filming um, this fall um, in Kansas City. And we hope that in the spring, February or March, we'll be able to have it and be able to launch it, which is really exciting. It'll be called Cry Purple the Movie. Um, and you can go to um, crypurplemovie.com or the Cry Purple Movie Facebook page and kind of follow that whole adventure and journey. Um, my second book is, and, and Cry Purple is really just like snapshot to my own narrative. Mm -hmm. um, a, little, a little insider tip, um, the story is surrounded with people that died in the life that never had a chance to have a voice or a story. Um, so all my characters that are kind of going on around me throughout the movie are going to be lives that were lost before they found their hope. And, and I felt that was really important to give them a voice. Um, and then my second book, Same Kind of Human, which was written for the church, for believers, because um, I think we tend to um, get caught up in religiosity and our own moral judgments that impede us from really do what Christ has called us to do, which is we love God with all of our heart and we love our fellow human um, as our brother. And and, and, and we, the church is safe inside the walls, but the church, we're called to be the church outside of the walls. And, and how do we get back to that? Mm. Oh my God, you're so powerful. You're amazing. <laughs> you are, you're amazing. It's so amazing. And then um, I want to, uh, I really don't have much more to ask you. You, 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 you explained everything and, and, and every, hold up. Yes, I do. What are you, what are some events that people can come and hear you speak at? Where are some, in Kansas City? Oh my gosh. Or, well, uh, every, anywhere. If it's in Kansas City, St. Louis, Chicago. <laughs> you can go to and forgive it because it needs to be updated. <laughs> um, and we're in the process because I just added my second book and I just added the movie link this week. Um, is uh, you can go to christinesvision.org mm -hmm. um, and you can you know learn more about how to like I love helping organizations reach these people better, um, <laughs> um, as well as I love coming into the church to help us. How do we love better? Um, and 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 um, so you can go to christinesvision.org. Um, and you can follow me on Facebook. I'm pretty transparent. Um, you can go to Christine C. McDonald um, or Christine's Vision, Christine Clarity McDonald. Either of those two pages on Facebook, you can kind of keep up with my adventures, where I'm going to be, when I'm going to be. Amen. Uh, yep. well, well, I guess that'll be it. I, I really appreciate you taking your time out to let Avart me 
interview you and take the time out to let the world get a little bit insight. My my followers matching yours and everything that you know, it's Aww. it's amazing. And like I said, it's it's I kind of feel you when with the the situations you've been through. I've been incarcerated. I wasn't an ad I was an addict, you know, I've become partially blind, you know, and it was amazing to see somebody that been through my shoes in a woman's perspective, you know? So, and I had to reach out, I had to reach out, but- uh, I'm so glad you did, Jesse. <laughs> <laughs> but I haven't, no, no more questions, but if you'd like to give some shout outs or anything else you would like to connect your, the people to, you can right now if you would like to, if you have anything else to say. I don't have anything else to say, just this is the deal. Um, I, I, I guess I do have two things, one, and for for people that want to help people that are hurting, and um, my mantra is do for one what you wish you could do for many, and it'll be enough. I think we think about incarceration, we think about um, homelessness, we think about prostitution, trafficking, substance abuse. We think about these issues, and they seem so huge or so massive that we don't have a place at the table or ability to to play a part. And, and I think one person at a time, we can all make a difference. Amen. Um, and, and then secondly, look, we all have the ability to light a spark of hope in someone. But we also equally have the ability to stomp out an ember. Right? Yeah. And so that it's important to always make eye contact, yeah. smile, acknowledge those people all around you. You never know what's going through somebody's life. And and we're called to love our brother as ourselves. And your smile, that connection may be just the hope they need to carry on. Amen. Because we don't know what's going on in someone else's lives. And we are called as Christians to be the hands and feet of Christ. Hmm. In whatever situation that we're in. Not just to church on Sunday. And not just <laughs> for the little group that you sign up to participate in once or twice a year at your church. Yeah, I every single day. In everything that we do. We are commanded. Amen. You are powerful. <laughs> I would like to thank you for being the guest on Avar Max Last Radio, where you can advertise all gifts and talents. I want everybody on here to give some thumbs up for Christina McDonald. She is so powerful. She has a, I didn't even know you had a movie coming out. That is so big to me. Hey, and if you need any uh, people in there, I'm, I'm, I'm here. Call me. You, you got one number. I mean, I, I, how about I invite you? I got. How about I invite you to come hang out um, one day on the set for screening? I mean, for filming. Okay, I'll do that. I'm down. I'm, you want to? I'm down. I'm down. I got you. I'm down. I'm down. <laughs> so, but I'll thank you for everything. And, and and if you need anything, Christine, I'm here. You know I am. I'm here for you. Aw, thank you, my brother. <laughs> Same here. Same here. <laughs> Well, thank you, and we're going to go ahead and log off. I love you. Give me a call. Let me know when that movie coming out so I can purchase that movie. <laughs> you got it. You got it. Peace out. Bye. All right. God bless.